What's going on guys, Magnolia Mo here and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to go over Joentel's True Target by Magic Beans application. I'm going to go over the setup of the microphone, the spatial audio calibration disc, the Magic Beans application, take some measurements, and then we'll get into some fun stuff. We're gonna compare the frequency responses using REW with the regular direct live calibration versus the Magic Beans direct live calibration and compare it to the Odyssey standard based calibration. And then I will provide my final thoughts and impressions about the, the Magic Beans application and the benefits of having a true target curve. When it comes to direct live, once you've run through the entire calibration, right? And you now you're looking at your target curves and your frequency responses. And Direct Live gives you the options to adjust the target curve or load your own target curve. My hangup, you know, up until this point, using the Pioneer and the Denon is, what the hell target curve should I use, right? I know there are target curves available uh, online. I can uh, get the Harman curves, right? Load those in or I can design my own, but how am I actually adjusting the target curve correctly, right? That's, that's the big gray area, at least for me. I know there are a lot of people who are much more smarter than me who can, you know, design their own filters and do their own target curves. But for an average person, you know, like myself, it, it's just, I'm just, I just don't know, right? What target curve to use. It's almost like, and, and excuse the comparison here, it's almost like going online getting someone else's calibrated settings for your display or your projector and then kind of replicating them in your room. It's not the same, right? Lighting is different in your room. Your display might be a different version. You know, uh, it, there could be many different things, but you're just going off of somebody else's. So that's how I look at the Harman curve, right? It could be, it could be a very beneficial curve, right, to use but it's using maybe the Harman speakers, right? It's maybe the Ravel speakers, I'm not sure. I have BMWs uh, and I'm sure the in-room response, right, is gonna have a lot to say with the target curve that you use because every speaker is going to perform differently in a different room, right? And then your target curve is going to be different. The Magic Beans application, it actually takes in-room response, right? Near field response of your speakers and then your main listening position, okay? And then it comes up with a target curve, a true target that is designed for your speaker and for your room. That's why I think Magic Beans is very beneficial. So I do wanna thank Joe for partnering with me uh, on this particular video. This is not a paid video per se. This is all my own personal thoughts, impressions, and the way I like to, to go about comparing and measuring things, right? So, so Joe has nothing to do with what I'm going to say in this video or the content. So without further delay, let's get on with it. Okay, let's get started. I have the spatial audio calibration disc loaded in the Panasonic. I got my OmniMic setup hooked up to my PC running the Magic Beans application on my PC. The first thing we need to do is make sure that the processing on the Denon is all turned off, right? So we're gonna go into setup, speakers, into manual setup. I'm gonna pick speaker preset one. Speaker preset two is where I have my direct live calibration setup. So speaker preset one is where I had Odyssey previously. And go into audio. Press enter, turn Odyssey off. So there's no processing going on. Then go back to speakers, set every speaker to large and turn off the subwoofer. Okay, this is my speaker layout. Subwoofers set as directional, so I'm gonna turn them off. Crossovers, turn everything to full range. Turn all of the levels to default. Everything is at zero. So now that's all done. 
we go to our special audio calibration disc. We're gonna go to periodic pink noise. You got your front left, center, front right, front wide. So it's got all the channels, so we just have to select the appropriate one. So we will start with front left first. And here I am on Magic Beans. Okay, select our speaker layout. Ooh, goes all the way to 128 channels. Wow, 7.1.4. And then click next. All right, I think we're gonna start with the first measurement here. So I went ahead and I took measurements for all of my 11 channels. I'm not going to show you that step-by-step -step process because Technodad and Joe Intel have plenty of videos on that actual process and they do a great job guiding you through it. What I am going to talk about is the LFE channel. When it comes to the LFE channel, once you're done with all of your individual channel measurements, you are going to have to go back into the AVR menu and turn the subwoofers on. What I did was I went a step further and I adjusted the crossover for every speaker to 250 hertz so that I get maximum signal going through the sub. Once all the measurements are done, Magic Beans will go ahead and generate all the filters. We save the filters. I'm going to name it my HT 422. Save it. And here is the target curve. I'm going to download the image so that I can share it on the Discord group. Now let's click on Unified Sound Field, select Direct Live Bass Control, export those filters. That's done. Let's go ahead and export the direct live filters as well and then I have the option of downloading the measurement data that's compatible with REW so that I can do some analysis I'm gonna go ahead and do that I'm also going to download the magic beans measurements for further analysis and we are done all right so Let's take a look at some frequency responses and compare them with the standard direct live that you see right here that I had previously taken versus Odyssey that you see down here where it says standard and then direct live with bass control using magic beans. Start with front left speaker. We have two curves here, direct live Bass control, it's this curve right here, versus direct live bass control with magic beans. Direct live with magic beans does slightly better, or actually a lot better in the high frequencies. There is a there is a big difference, right? So in the two kilohertz range, I'm at 81 dB versus at 77 dB, right? So that's four dB difference. This is audible frequencies. 3 kilohertz 82 versus 78 right so about 4 dBs and then really high frequencies they kind of even out uh, and then in the mid range between 400 and 700 Hertz not a big difference but at that 558 Hertz range 82 versus 78 about 4 dB difference there uh, and then as we go down the frequency ladder here, Magic Beans does produce better output between 100 to 140 hertz. Both of these suffer from the same null that I have between 80 and 90 hertz. Magic Beans does improve on that in, in the sense that it's not as wide of a frequency range, right? And then this is way too powerful for my subs. I'm actually afraid for the safety of the SB3000, but I'm going to do some listening at my increased volume levels and see how it does. 81 to all the way to 21 hertz, I have a significant gain, you know, as far as the left speaker bass managed at, at, and crossed over at 70 hertz is concerned. You'll see the same with all the other speakers. Now, let's measure the sub, the LFE output. And be prepared to get blown away with this. Here's the LFE. All right. Same null, you know, between. You saw that on the left speaker, right? But 
But look at this output though. This is next level. Very strong all the way to it just it rises until 23 hertz. The output is very strong until 13.62 hertz. That is incredible. All right, so where is my LFE for regular direct live right here? They both start to roll off considerably after 14.19 hertz. Huge hump between 22 hertz to 73 hertz, right? 72.6 hertz. So if you're talking about dynamic sound, that is that is going to get you dynamic sound. That's going to eliminate the need to use dynamic EQ in my opinion. And it's uh, going to be much more livelier uh, when it comes to movie watching or even music. Uh, I want to just bring in the LFE output from Odyssey. This is the Odyssey and this is Magic Beans LFE output. Odyssey was actually rolling off around 15 hertz. Magic Beans goes with direct live with Magic Beans goes to about 14 hertz. So I'm gaining there. But then there's just so much more gain in that audible bass frequencies. And it's too bad that I have this crazy null here because this is audible, you know, pretty audible frequency right here. But as far as sub bass region is concerned, Magic Beans outdoes. LFE from your regular direct live bass control and Odyssey standard calibration. I mean, there's just no contest, right? Best is bass control, direct live bass control with Magic Beans, and then direct live bass control standard. And then the least favorable, in my opinion, here is the Odyssey. It's kind of dull, as you can see from this frequency response, and that's how it would sound too. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to set the baseline right for our volume. What I'm going to do is I'm going to play uh, just the frequency response from Omni Mic and I'm going to try to read 75 dBs at the 1 kilohertz mark. 75.1 So I've brought all the curves here. The black curve is your Magic Beans with Direct Live Bass Control. The red is ma uh, just straight Direct Live Bass Control. The blue is the Odyssey curve, all right? So with standard bass. Let's focus on the bass, right? And the high frequencies were relatively the same. This is where the biggest difference is from a uh, actual gains perspective. The Magic Beans, Direct Live, Bass Control, maximum output in that scene averaged, right? I, mean, I think it went higher than that, but this is just an average that you're looking at. 32 hertz, 114 dB, and my volume wasn't that high. It was minus 15 on the Denon dial. Very powerful. This is actually room-shaking bass that I was getting in this scene. It was very dynamic. The regular Direct Live, with bass control was down from 114 down to 108 so about 60 dB drop in that 32 hertz range and then last was 104 dB and almost 105 dB at 32 hertz for the Odyssey so 104 105 to almost 10 dB difference the sound is just way more dynamic with Magic Beans and then the lowest of frequencies, I'm going to stick with where my subs kind of rolled off in that 14 hertz range. Still getting 94 dB at that 14 hertz versus 90 dB for regular direct live bass control versus 86 dB for uh, Odyssey. So, you know, take it for what it's worth. It does sound amazing and it sounds very dynamic. So to pull it all together. Right. I've been using Odyssey for the longest time. Started using Direct Live with the Pioneer and now with the Denon. I love Direct Live with bass control. Having experienced Odyssey for many years, uh, you know, I just find Direct Live does so many good things, you know, when it comes to 
the base management, uh, especially the base control feature, base management in your in your specific room, all the filters and the customization that you can do. But to add magic beans to it, right, and get that true target for your speakers in your room, it takes it to the next level, right? I'm not saying this because just because, right? Uh, as I mentioned, this is not a paid video. This is, you saw in this uh, particular video what the differences are uh, when you have the, the true target curve, right, that you are going to apply in Direct Live, right? When you do that, the results are amazing in my opinion. Overall, I do recommend, you know, using Magic Beans, the true target curve, and then you can, once you have that true target curve for each of your speakers, then you can uh, use Multi-EQ uh, X Pro, right, uh, from Odyssey, or Direct Live, right, either or, right? I, I just think Direct Live does a lot of good things when it comes to the base management and the base region. All right, guys, so, once again, I hope you found this video useful. As usual, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.